this guy was considered to really be a center point of the manipulation, the control, and the bribery that goes on in the global pyramid of power that we've referenced so much, right? Hello, welcome, and finally, one, I'm in front of camera again on Bitstocks TV, Bitstocks Media, which is great. And secondly, what better to return back to screen on other than Truth and Light episode two. So we've had a, a lot of thought going behind how we're gonna restructure Bitstocks Media, um, how we're really gonna ramp up our efforts moving forward. And we want Truth and Light to remain in the essence of what the first episode was all about, but really wanna extend it out to more members within the Bitstocks family. I really make this kind of a, a a safe place of truth uh, at Bitstocks where anyone and everyone within the Bitstocks uh, team can come and speak about controversial subject matters and matters that we feel is important to the development of humanity on this planet we call Earth. Because everything that we're doing here at Bitstocks and everything we're doing behind gravity is with a very pro-humanity goal Otherwise, I don't think any of us really uh, would be here and be as motivated as we are uh, doing the work it is that we are. So I know people know who you are, mm -hmm. but Nicola, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. So my name's Nicola um, and I handle Michael's socials on social media, um, but also I have been doing the research as well. Mm. Um, so very behind awakening, very behind truth and light. Um, personally, I'm just gone down rabbit holes after rabbit holes after rabbit holes. <laughs> Sounds I'm guessing. Like a trend here. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I'm their sister, so that probably doesn't sound very surprising that I've gone down like thousands of rabbit holes. Um, so yeah, I'm just here to kind of steer the conversation, kind of keep you guys on track a little bit. I know we can go off and off. Um, so yeah, yeah so hopefully... you're, you are essentially playing moderator today. Yes, right? so I'm going to be asking some thought-provoking questions, hopefully. All right, we'll touch on the subject matters in a minute. Mm -hmm. And Antonio, would you like to introduce yourself, mate? Yes, so my name's Antonio Schillingford, of course featured on the first episode of Truth and Light and also Crypto Time, and I head up the advisory desk here. Um, the last episode, we just spent a lot of the time laying down the groundwork. It's and a then, freestyle, Yeah, right? complete freestyle. I, I had a podcast booked I can't remember who it was with, uh, but for whatever reason, it got last minute cancelled, rescheduled, and we had the whole room set up. And I looked at Antonio, I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Do you want to just do some truth talking? Yeah. And he was, like, he was like, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> Put the cameras on and we just spoke. And what's funny is it's probably one of the more popular videos that we've uploaded on the Bitstocks YouTube channel in terms of direct feedback that I get when I'm walking around, right? Yeah. So if I go to different events, it's always, oh, I can't believe you guys put that Truth and Light episode out there. It was so freaking awesome, right? Yeah. And that is really personifies what Bitstocks is about. We talk about this stuff all the freaking time. We talk about it openly and we speak about it in a sense of, all right, look, we understand that this is really controversial. We understand it's quite challenging, uh, but like get involved, like just, just get involved. Am I the foremost authority of everything there is to say as to how humanity is developing on this planet? Absolutely not. But I want to talk about certain things and I know we all want to talk about certain things and we want to encourage people to engage in these uh, topics and in these subject matters. And I think what's unique and what people are eventually gonna start seeing is that we're not just talking on these subject matters. Um, there's a lot of development gone behind exploring how certain things are a reality. So predominantly around technology, mm -hmm. uh, different form of mathematics, which I just keep parroting on about. Mm -hmm. um, but we're actually doing things uh, with the technology. So this is all about really and truly a great demonstration of young minds thinking on old, old, old cosmic shoulders, right? Yeah. And really trying to reconnect with who we really are at a much deeper level um, and what we're deciding and choosing to do with our time today. So all that being said, next, hit us off. What's the mandate? What are we talking about today? Right, so I know that with the last Truth and Light episode, we kind of just laid down a foundation. Um, so I wanted to go in a little bit more detail about some of the things that has happened since then, because that was about eight months ago. So loads of things have happened since then. Um, so let's just, we're going to kick it off with the Epstein case, because obviously I think that's probably the biggest thing um, that's come of the what, indictment. What, what happened with Epstein? Did he, I heard that he, he killed himself. I heard well, he, he killed kill himself, himself as well. Or, um, there, was, there was a lot of different articles that were coming 
coming out left, right, and centre. Wet tissue paper. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, that's, um, that's pretty strong if you bind it in a rope, right? <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe if you chew enough of it. <laughs> Have you actually seen a picture of his room as well? It's literally completely bare. Like, I don't know how on earth he managed to kill himself, if this is what's been said. Like, with air, I, I literally it don't must, know. It must be true because I'm pretty sure I've seen memes where, on the, what's it, the underside oh, yes, of the snapple? I've actually got some. Yep. This was really funny, actually. You know, with the snapples where you get the, the true facts, they did um, a meme. We'll probably put it up on the screen with the edit, but it's this one here. <laughs> <laughs> You've opened your snapple and you see that. That's it. Right, all right, all right. So before we jump on the memes and we start like laughing and joking about things uh, in terms of just how ridiculous, ridiculously obvious it now is. And that's what's funny, right? It's not... He is definitely not a, a funny subject matter, no. right? And we'll get into the more serious aspects of it shortly. But I think the, the, it, it's nice to have a humorous aspect to all of this as to how disclosure now is breaking out because people are waking up and they're waking up now in, ironically, in internet fashion where memes are just w delivering this message to a mass audience that right now, even the most skeptic of skeptical minds are like, dude, this guy didn't kill himself. Mm. <laughs> so it's it's been great from that aspect. But let's let's go over the more Yeah, so the main deeper. thing with the the Epstein case that I kind of wanted to cover, I think I think people get caught up in this whole, did he kill himself? Did he not kill himself? And although that is important, is it really that important? Um I think the main thing that's important is that how high profile this case was and the people who have kind of been brought up with this case along with Epstein. Um, and I think it's just really open to can of worms. So I just wanted to get you guys' opinion on the case in general and basically just focus on the impact and the consequence of this case as well. I think it's the most important well, thing. The whole thing with Epstein is this guy was considered to really be a center point of the manipulation, the control, and the bribery that goes on in the global pyramid of power that we've referenced so much, right? So you have certain individuals who are very instrumental in maintaining the very malevolent integrity of that global pyramid of power. So Epstein and his antics, uh, which are insanely, insanely just evil, um, not to mention illegal, just pure evil, right? You talk about complete solicitation uh, and sexualization of children, right? And he built a global web doing so. And the clients that he catered for and service were high power businessmen and high power politicians, right? So if you think about, all right, what is the, how is this welded? Why, 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 what's the bigger agenda behind why certain things within our society are allowed to resume. Because it's not too far ago, Jimmy Savile was a case, mm. right? And that blew the UK open and people yeah. thought, whoa, hold on, like this guy was so well connected in the BBC, he was getting private access to children's hospitals, he was connected to the royal family. Like it's people were like, whoa, how, how could this have gone under the radar, right? Yeah. And that really caused a paradigm shift in, in the UK, uh, which unfortunately has been suppressed again. But then when you have a case like Jeffrey Epstein, and then it's linked now to people like Prince Andrew, yeah. Jimmy Savile case all of a sudden isn't so far away again. And those memories are now being very much re, uh, yeah. like you get a band-aid ripped off those memories. Mm -hmm. And just to um, follow on from there, because of course on our last episode, we spoke about um, these secret indictments being released. Mm. And of course we, we, we are now seeing that. And especially with the Jimmy Savile case, the way that people were engineered in the earlier days um, before we had a, a web. So with the Jimmy Savile case, um, and what I mean by a web is that came out solely at the time. It was literally a shock to the system, but the way that people process- when, when, when was the Jimmy Savile case? Can you quickly check that? The, yeah, I that, think so. You. Go on, carry on. So on, when people process information, um, because we are getting hit with so much information all at once, all the time, through all different forms of social media, and even just, for example, coming into work, nine times out of 10, you're gonna see something, newspapers. People's attention spans are, are very, very limited. So every time one of these cases come up, it comes up for about a week or two, then completely disappears. Now, this is a very interesting case now with the 
Jeffrey Epstein situation because now it's linking into so many different people that they can't just sweep it under the rug anymore. So we're, we're now starting to see all of these people pretty much get woken up and, and become aware of exactly what's happening at the top of these pyramids. And that's a great positive, right? Um, that is, is creating awareness, it's bringing awareness. But the negative aspect is, is the desperation to re-steer attention away yeah. from mm. certain events. Right. We're definitely going to get onto that as well with the next point, the next topic that I was speaking about. I think that was a massive distraction from the Epstein case. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll, we'll you might as well, you it. might as well segue into it because I don't want to. If you've got it there, I didn't realize that's your next point. Yeah. But she gave go, a go slap for it. on the wrist. Yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> I, felt, I, I felt it. I was like, all right, all right. She's like, she like, keep mandate, keep mandate. <laughs> No, we can talk a little bit more about Epstein. Sure? I do want to get into it a little oh, bit more. You. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. That's all right. Uh, Continue. <laughs> um, but so, as I was saying, uh-huh. right, the smoke and mirrors uh, aspect, right? Now, there are a variety of different things that has been happening recently. It, every month, there's a new reason to impeach Trump, mm-hmm. uh, as a perfect example. Yeah. Okay. So, the circus that is poli- politics globally right now really is taking center stage in a time where the most prolific pedophile connected to the most high power people on the freaking planet, news is breaking out, we seem to have political unrest everywhere. Yeah. Like ev- quite heightened, like political unrest uh, absolutely everywhere. So people need to pay attention to these connections. Um, you've got Project, v- I don't know, can I speak about this? Are you sure? I mean, Project we're going Veritas. to speak about it, but yeah, you, go you, for you, it. You can, you can drop the Yeah, seat. drop the little nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's, there's just an incredible wave of information that's coming out from insanely credible sources, mainstream sources, uh, a lot of these, like Fox News is putting out some pretty good mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, Fox uh, News is really good right now. So when you have now official channels of distribution speaking some truths, right, the desperation, the wounded tiger is more likely to strike. All right, so we're doing great. We're cleaning them up. The swamp is being uh, drained. Indictments and uh, the unsealing of indictments are happening right now. Was it Giseline, Grisseline Maxwell? Oh Gis- yeah, Giseline Maxwell. Yeah. I think is she's on the it. run. Yeah. Apparently, there's a bounty trying to find this woman. They don't think they they saying that she, they think she's a, like a Bond villain. You're never going to find this woman, <laughs> All right? What is playing out right now is. That Hollywood's gonna, you, you're gonna have to write a movie on this, mm. uh, and and the movie I would imagine is gonna have to be censored in comparison to the truth of what's truly going on. That is how crazy uh, what is going on right now. Yeah. But this is what I was really trying to signify what, a year ago now, over a year ago now, with the original Awakening, right? Mm. Was was forecasting that this stuff is what's going to happen, and people are gonna start realizing. Uh, the crimes against humanity, how the planet has actually been uh, run and maintained up until this point, and why it's important that we pay attention to certain technologies that will actually enable true sovereignty and maintain it, right? Everything's about opportunity. It's a very opportunistic moment right now on this planet that is actually overwhelmingly positive, irrespective of how ugly some of these aspects and these news and these stories that are breaking out are. We should be happy that they're breaking out right now because they're being addressed. For the Mm. first time in a long time, they're being addressed. Because we could have spoken about this ages. Mm. Publicly, I could have spoken about this 10 years ago, right? Would I have? No. And the reason why I feel more comfortable and we feel more comfortable and we're building something towards doing something about all of this stuff by building great solutions, helping sovereignty and just helping humanity uh, go on to the next stage by combining certain technologies. This is the power right now, which is why it's important we feel uh, to speak about these matters. But instead of rambling on, do you want to cover the next point? What's the next point? Yeah, so let's go for it. So just going on to the point of you basically saying that with the whole Epstein um, case, you know, the deep state trying to regain control over the narrative in an act of desperation, they've kind of put out this big, big climate change emergency. Um, and it's oh just, God. yeah, gonna, we're going to, yeah, video. we're going to get into this. Um, well, obviously without talking too much about Greta, I know she is a child, which is incredibly, incredibly smart, mm-hmm. putting a child um, at the front of this campaign, mm-hmm. because you know, who's going to talk smack about a child. 
Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. So basically, climate change campaign, uh, Greta Thunberg, she's 16 years old, she's from Sweden. She's gone to the UN and she's done a speech about climate change. And she said, you've stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. So on that, firstly, let's talk about climate change. What's your thoughts on that? And also just what is your opinion on the agenda behind this, apart from it being a distraction? World resource control, let's get a little bit more into depth with it. Well, short answer, climate change is absolute bullshit. But before I elaborate, you want to elaborate first? Yeah, so I've actually got um, some figures behind it as well. So in the last two million years, the temperature has alternated between cold and warm interglacial periods that lasted 15,000 years each. Now, over recent geological time, the Earth's temperature has fluctuated naturally between about 4 Celsius and minus 6 Celsius with respect to the 20th century temperature. So if we are scanning back as far as what is stated there, what is happening right now is natural. End of the day, things move. Things are going to change consistently. As long as it's not out of the norm, which if we scan far back enough, it's not out of the norm. So I personally believe all of this climate change that is coming out now, again, is, is something to steer a lot of people's thought processes. Mm -hmm. And not just that, we've seen a, a few um, situations arise recently with groups. Now, uh, funny enough, I actually had a conversation with uh, a woman on the train. Um, I can't remember what the actual group name is, but she had one of the stickers on the back of her phone. And um, I just kind of said that to her, the, um, like, can you just tell me a bit about it? Yeah. So she starts explaining to me all of her views. And I was just saying to her, where is the source of your information? Like, well, where's the facts to back up exactly what you're saying to me right now? And she couldn't deliver any mm. of the facts. Where I had a massive issue with that conversation, because of course everyone's everyone's opinion is valid. Um, where I had the no, issue, everyone, everyone has an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where I had the and issue, they're entitled to their opinion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That validity she, is a different. Subject yeah, uh, uh, and she didn't allow me my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> when I was having the conversation, um, I brought up a few situations of, for example, uh, who do you think funds this? Mm. Yeah, and straight away it was just conspiracy theory. I was like, in this situation, you're stating to me a bunch of information that you have no validation on, so you can't trace it back and actually validate what is currently happening right now. And as soon as I pose it, you're, you're telling me conspiracy theory. Mm. And what straight away went through my head, um, and this was my own internal thought, I didn't say it to her, um, but was a uh, shepherd and sheep analogy that mm. you come out with. And the herd being the herd, and every now and then you have a single person that will pop their head out of the herd and just be like, hold on. We're going to white gates. <laughs> <laughs> they can close those white gates. <laughs> and I ain't seen anyone come out from there. Yeah. yeah. And the guy that opened it yeah. was the same guy that set the dog up on us. Exactly. <laughs> like, this ain't logical. <laughs> There's something wrong here, boy. <laughs> and I just think on that note as well, I think with the whole climate change thing, it has become a political matter when really we should be focusing on the facts. I completely agree. And I know that there were 500 scientists who agreed with this point and went to the UN and said, this is not a mass emergency but you don't see all of that plastered on mainstream media you just see Greta Thunberg saying that you've destroyed her childhood there's two different aspects to this right and they get quite um, muddled together so you've got climate change full-blown bullshit as to how it's being depicted like yeah. human beings are responsible for climate change it's given us way too much uh, credit fortunately we're not we could be with nuclear weapons etc mm. etc uh, but ultimately human production is kind of like a fart in the wind even to like a massive volcano uh, erupting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, c carbon emissions, uh, therefore having an effect on climate. Environmental issues are a very different subject matter. Yeah. So we are absolutely horrific and screwing up Mother Gaia with how we're treating the planet. Agreed, right? yeah. And that is a more a consciousness and how we interact with nature problem. Nature can mm. deal with it, mm -hmm. right? It's terrible that you have, say, sea turtles with uh, rings, uh, plastic rings around their necks, like straws getting caught in their nose, um, whales with like massive amounts of plastic being found in their bellies, yeah. shoring up on uh, beach shores. Mm -hmm. 
that stuff's painful, yeah. right? Walruses climbing up higher uh, points on the on the mountain and falling off because of uh, climate uh, climate change. Right? Yeah. Mm. Now you see that stuff, and then instantly you think, okay, that is a direct consequence of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On the wash aspect, no, it's it's climate change. It's a cyclical thing, yeah. right? On plastic caught around a turtle's neck, absolutely, that's us, mm. right? So we need to stop chemical wastage, right? We really should be looking at different avenues of energy production as opposed from nuclear because all the waste is uh, of nuclear, like things like Chernobyl and Fukushima, that's great evidence that we should be looking uh, elsewhere, right? Yeah. So before, say 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we didn't really say, at least in the public domain, we had the technological uh, capabilities to say, all right, let's look at all of these other avenues, but that's the same can't be said today, right? So we should be having a transition away from these different forms of energy that produce such toxic uh, impacts on the environment. Yeah. And there needs to be a consciousness shift as to how we coexist with the environment, mm-hmm. right? And say, uh, I think there is definitely a conscious shift with that, like veganism uh, yeah, is a huge, yeah. huge one. And not just from, oh, I'm super like anti anything to do with animal produce, Right, it's more about okay. Well, how is land uh, being catered for animal production, right? And the meat industry and the big corporation take, big business take on on the meat industry, right? And then you look at other things like chemtrails uh, as well, and what that does to land. It actually makes land non-fertile, and the only way that land can be fertile is with like chemical concoctions made by companies like Monsanto. Edward right. Snowden recently just said that chemtrails aren't a thing, guys. <laughs> yeah, so Snowden. Uh, I've been very suspicious about Snowden for a while. Um, and then the Q dropped a massive confirmation uh, of that. I just didn't understand how he could have done what he apparently done, hacked the NSA with a freaking Rubik's Cube, uh, well, smuggled data out the NSA with a Rubik's mm. Cube, and then managed to just position himself in Russia um, and just do press chilling. releases yeah. um, and arrange all of this stuff before he was even like stationary. It just, it just it doesn't makes make no sense. sense from if a you're on a run way. for that, Esque stuff from an intelligence agency. Um, in my unqualified opinion on military operations and how military <laughs> actions uh, go, or like national security interests and how to best defend mm-hmm. them. Um, but at the same time, two plus two is always four. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of things that says Jella Pudding when yeah. I try to add up the <laughs> mathematics on, on what Snowden is and the whole case of Snowden, the things that he said thus far. Um, I just see him as an asset yeah. um, playing both sides. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I agree. And, and that recent podcast, I, I think, was just a bit of a stunt to, uh, of course, sell off his book and also just add in more disinformation. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people do look at him as, as a figure that, of course, done a whistleblow and released a lot of information. But there's a difference between whistleblowing and just being toxic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I think he was definitely on the toxic side. Definitely, because he didn't really speak about anything that people don't know already. Like he spent literally 20, 30 minutes speaking Going, about hmm, how pe- how yeah. the US y- hack hmm. our phones. <laughs> yeah. um, we we all pretty much know that by now uh-huh. um, and we don't really need to know the tech behind it. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, like I'm, I said, a lot of things without saying anything yeah. really. In, in iPhones, I'm pretty sure you've got a heat map as well and it literally shows you everywhere that you normally are. Yeah. <laughs> Next point. Right. Well, I did want to go a little bit more into climate change, um, but we can kind of just... No, we could touch on that because yeah. if you want, what, solar radiation? How, do you want, how, how deep you want to go? Well, yeah, we can talk a little bit about that and also just about what really is the agenda with this. Is it just a distraction from the Epstein case or is there more to it? Uh, it's definitely not a distraction just for the Epstein case. This has been an ongoing thing for ages, yeah. right? Uh, but it is just another one of those fear-mongering tactics um, that is used to now tell us there's going to be a charge on the air that you breathe. Mm. Um, everything is fearful. Yeah. We have a scarcity-based societal complex. I can't even say it's a scarcity-based economy. We have a scarcity-based societal complex that makes everyone thankful for whatever it is that you are awarded for your position, irrespective of how 
fruitful your position is or not. Just be thankful that, that you that you even have the air in your lungs, right? Mm. And everything as to how the world is structured in that sense, um, from a official capacity, it seems like is just pushing fear porn. Mm. And when you do a deeper dive on the science yourself, and then you start looking into uh, solar cycles, um, and you start realizing that this is a consequence that is a natural occurring thing and has happened multiple times within our solar system and there's actually a lot of evidence of the prior events um, that this has happened with. Uh, Noah's flood, yeah. Uh, yeah. perfect and example. Of course, to add into that, um, we just went through our solar maximum cycle. Well, Noah's flood, Noah's ark, yeah. Noah's but the flood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got what you meant. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> so of course we just literally went through our, our solar maximum um, again where we're going to be getting a lot more uh, rays from the sun and be getting hit with it and of course that does have knock on effects CMEs that- chronal mass ejections that's exactly. the technical scientific term chronal mass ejections CMEs and of course that that does have knock on effects so that's why you are currently seeing more volcanoes erupting more natural disasters happening um, literally typhoons everything ironically, more crazed, charged individuals who are actually being affected by the solar radiation that's coming in as well, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is why I find movies like The Joker really interesting in terms Mm. of their timing. This gets really deep. Yeah. This gets really, 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 really deep. (laughs) When you look into it like this, you you really start to understand that everything is really connected. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, so much. And within, I believe it's roughly about the next 10 years, we're going to be going through our next cycle of solar minimum. Um, and that is going to be where we do have a lot of changes, um, cosmic. Because well, this, this is what the Mayans were referring to, mm-hmm. right? So you've got 12 stages of the Zodiac, each stage of the Zodiac, 2,160 years, 12 stages, 12 times 1, 2, 1, 6, 0 is 25, 9, 2, 0. And that is one master cycle. You have three cycles because universe trinities. Yeah. So three rotations of the master cycle being a Zodiac is 25,920 times three, right? That is ushers the golden age. Guess where we are? We are at the end of the third cycle. Sun emits solar flash. Mm. Every religious book on this planet are all referencing some form of solar event. Call me a conspiracy theorist, (laughs) please, right? Mm. You don't know your religion, you don't know your history, and the science today, modern day science, actually supports the religious text that seems to cause so many divides between so many different people. But the one aspect that is actually uniformed across the vast majority of our religious uh, texture and teachings is a solar event. Mm -hmm. And and that is what dawns a new age, right? And then you have the reference in Law of One, uh, speaking about the harvest uh, awakening, uh, and this is this is the references and little points that we've been pointing at and making and saying, look, like this is a great time where so many people are waking up and there's a reason for it. Um, and there is definitely a connection with, ironically, what they're trying to brand as being negative climate change and bad, mm-hmm. bad, 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 bad. But there's actually a very positive consciousness shift coming in from this uh, energy that is activating people, that is causing discourse like this. Mm-hmm. Right, because this isn't just us. This isn't a bit stops thing. This is a global thing, and it's yeah. beautiful. And more and more people, Joe Rogan is just like he's on his own cloud nine uh, yeah. right now. He's very um, on this subject matter, questioning everything, having great discourse uh, with 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 guests and people that he's bringing on. Right, and even my circle, people that I'm interacting with and connecting with, is because of the same connection. I'm talking about multiple different aspects of uh, society from celebrities uh, or otherwise, the common thread is people are waking up yeah. and they've got questions, interesting questions. Yeah. Because th- this is now a, a very open topic. Everyone can talk about it. It's, it's stuff that has been in, in the news as well. Um, so of course you, you have your mainstream pointers that you can actually direct people to and, and in their head that gives them some form of validation yeah. that it's real um of course that is part of the issue mm. in general anyway but what i said in the last episode is the fact that we can now talk about these things 
openly um, without being labeled that you're crazy or that it is just a complete conspiracy theory. Because if there is an amount of evidence that is mounting up over here and then over here has no evidence and I'm saying something that is over here, who's the crazy one in the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. when I'm supported everything that we're saying? Yeah. Um, Funny enough, you get that. A perfect example is uh, very much within the Bitcoin SV community, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you got Craig comes out and yeah, he's got a very uh, eccentric, crazy, I get triggered um, side to him. But the guy is very much supported by facts. Right? Yeah. He spits facts like a mofo, yeah. right? And he's just like, uh -huh. stacked, uh -huh. facts yeah. stacked, yeah. right? And people just don't want to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they form their own opinion and they regurgitate what someone else who was ill-informed who also did not read the facts said. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what we're going to see beautifully play out is as the awakening happens within the Bitcoin uh, space, you could just you see minds light up, just do, 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 get activate, 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 because act, you're going to see it in the markets. This is going to be a flood towards SV. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is literally awakened minds just pat, 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 pat. And now everyone's focused their channeling into SV and they're going to realize, all right, Moving forward, I remember how long it took for me to be activated because I was one of those guys like Peter McCormack spitting and spewing ignorance from my other ignorant friend who was spitting and spewing ignorance, mm. right? So we can actually, in a weird way, kind of see how a, an awakening happens, happens because we're having the same thing happen in Bitcoin SV right now. Yeah, and just yeah. on that note, to so just bring it back a little bit so we don't stare off too much. Just before we do, yeah, uh, go don't slap it. me on the wrist too much. I okay. won't go too much off topic. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. But, <laughs> just talking on uh, what you were just saying there. Um, so, of course, everything's pretty much a numbers game as well. So, uh, of course, Craig... He, he, he does come out with some colourful language every now and then. But to be honest with you, I completely understand it. Mm. And I think he's actually being quite good in the situation because if you know you're right, and but you have a lot of other people um, just quite frankly talking a bunch of bullshit, but they are getting the majority of people's ears just because they have mass followers. You deserve, you deserve to defend your position. 100%. And yeah. any way that you want to defend it. And after a while, you are going to get frustrated. And with people continually asking you questions when they're not knowledgeable about the situation and then you're explaining it and all they're trying to do is pick little points on on maybe you miss saying a word. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> But I, I can understand where the frustration comes from. And the way that a lot of the crypto media works is you have a random person that just says a tweet. One, me, one news site will take that tweet and then use that as their source and then write a whole piece on it. Then you have another media outlet then refer to the, the previous article and use that as their source. And it's just a knock on effect. And of course, with that, from just one single tweet, that is hitting millions of people's I, I eyes. I give a perfect example of like, and what's it? A Pomolino? What's his name? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's the ignorance indicator for me in this space, right? <laughs> he has so many freaking thoughts. He just, he never says anything, yeah. right? And that is sheeple thinking to the, to the highest degree, right? Mm -hmm. He just says, short bankers buy Bitcoin and everyone's like, ah, yes! <laughs> yes! It makes so much sense! It makes so much sense, my precious! <laughs> It's <laughs> just like, dude, like, what the hell? Like, he said the same thing 24 hours ago. Uh -huh. And in the 24 hours, you're like, yes! <laughs> um, it's just like, oh, well. And I, I find this stuff funny, right? Yeah. Because yeah. Everything, genuinely, everything's a fractal, mm -hmm. right? It's the same patterns repeating themselves in just, in, in just different places, right? And one thing that, I think it's gonna be really interesting is we have to factor in is next year really is it's 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 the last sprint for Trump in his first term. Yeah. Right? And as confident as I would say I am that he will be re-elected, right? You can't bank on that because as I said very early in this conversation, you cannot underestimate a wounded tiger. Mm -hmm. And if you do underestimate a wounded tiger, that is where ego and overconfidence will deal its final blow on you and you will snap the feet out the jaws of victory. Because I do think the jaws are very much open right now yeah. in terms of victory. But we did not get 
complacent because that tiger can still freaking strike. There's actually a video that emerged from um, Hillary Clinton and she's got an interview. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk too much about the Clintons. I know that can get very passionate real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 the fucking shooting target. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But apparently in her <laughs> words, right, she's saying that it's a possibility she could run again. I don't know whether this is a joke or not, but she said that, um, yeah, she could beat Trump again, in from, her words. I don't know what world one of the funny she lives in comes, where she thought she'd beat him. But. One of the funny aspects that comes from conspiracy theory research is, from what I've heard, it sounds like she can't ever run a buff. <laughs> <laughs> don't shoot me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're bleeding in um, like billions right now, which yeah. um, which course, will hopefully kind of get and, rid of their power a little bit. How as well. this? And of course, this will be the last part on Trump, and then we'll bury it, and then we'll yes. go on to something else. Yeah, <laughs> back, back on track. But with Trump, he done a powerful, powerful interview where he was talking about the sort of influence that social media does have and the issues that he had through his first election. And um, whilst he was running, of course, going up against Hillary Clinton, um, he didn't have to fight Hillary Clinton. That, that wasn't the battle that he was having at the time. What the true battle was, was with social media. Yeah. Because um, we're starting to see a lot of censorship in general um, through all of the different media sites. And if we really think about it, how many different places on the internet do we really experience? We experience Google, Facebook, Instagram, and very rarely do people actually venture out of that. Yeah. So if you think about it and, and think of it as a bit of a funnel, um, this is the rest of the internet. Mm -hmm. What we're experiencing is this much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they control effectively what they want you to see. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we know that all of these different platforms have algorithms behind them. These algorithms spit out exactly what it is that they want you to see. Yeah. So that is what Trump was really fighting against. The fact that he was getting smear campaigns left, right and centre. And again, we're starting to see the exact same thing again. Mm. And uh, during this interview, uh, Trump sent a lot of shots to these uh, media sites and we're starting to actually see the knock-on effects of yeah. that. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the data analytica scandal that has come out is actually a, a knock-on effect of that. Mm -hmm. So... This also links into blockchain technology, which we'll get into later on down the line. Yes, we will be but, um, this podcast. We're really and truly having a purification of everything. And the fact that people can actually have a real, real true voice and actually voice their real opinions without being censored is an important element to us entering into this new phase. Yeah, yeah. I 100% agree with that. But I don't think that we should um, overpromise on just how quickly the alternative is going to come from, say, the blockchain space. Yeah. Um, I can't see us replacing any one of these platforms anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, right, guys, we're actually getting onto this in the end, so I'm, I'm going to... Oh, you really are strong. Yeah. Right, aren't you? <laughs> Otherwise, we're just going to go off in a room with you two. Right. We can be talking right. for like three hours here, okay? <laughs> we All have right. a gap. That's why we brought you here, to keep, okay. keep it confined. <laughs> Basically, um, these are our closed-door conversations that we yes. have a lot. <laughs> so it, 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 it does branch out everywhere. It really. does, <laughs> really. But I think you guys pretty much introduced the next topic quite well. We're going to go into mainstream media, um, really just talk about what's been happening at the moment because there's a lot of exposure going on um, with the mainstream and um, CNN, ABC, etc. Uh, but just on the climate change point, I literally just want to say, please, please, please do your research. Um, like you said, everyone is completely entitled to their opinion, but we are sharing these opinions and I think it's really important yeah, that we're validating uh, what we're saying. So um, she actually elevated her voice when she thought I was going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> validating. Why am I being, I'm not some Hitler, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really being portrayed as this The point Hitler. that I was going to say, it, actually just in addition, was okay. solar radiation, CMEs, chronal mass ejections. Uh, start your research around mm -hmm. that area in relation to climate change. Um, and I, you'll start unlocking a lot of doors of yeah. information. That's it. And 
of course, don't take what we're saying for gospel, even though we have done our research. Um, just take these as points for yourself to go away, do your deep dives, and then come out with your own answers. And of course, if they are different, then we, we invite people to, to comment and we will reply um, because we have backed up our, our research. Yeah, and if you just look into it for a little bit, it does get really interesting looking to Greta, her family, uh, family ties, uh, who's Antifa, around right? her. Yes, and even her, the person that's with her, majority of her um, campaigns and her speeches. She's part of the One Foundation. Foundation. I think her name is Louisa Marie something. I can't remember her mm. surname, uh, but she's tied to the One Foundation funded by George Soros, managed by Bill Gates. So mm. yeah, we go. Don't really have to say much more. It, That's it, a rabbit hole in yeah, itself. Exactly. And yeah. look into George Soros as well. Yeah, um, really he do. has videos that are there um, that were recorded way back in the day. Um, look into how he actually generated his money in the first place. And again, just, just do the research on the topics. Great. So let's go into mainstream media now. Um, so mainstream media, specifically CNN and ABC, they're under a lot of backfire at Ooh, the moment. Yeah, that ABC thing recently. Yes, right? that was Ooh. amazing. <laughs> it was it was really good to see. Whether or not I kind of resonated with her herself, I think she was kind of oh, just she's self-serving. yeah, literally. She, she was, was just she was upset that she just yeah, didn't get to release get her scoop. story. Yeah. <laughs> um, but okay, let's go into this. So Project Veritas. Uh, that's kind of backed by James O'Keefe. He's an American activist doing really, really good work at the moment. He brought out a whistleblower. I think his name is Corey Parch or something like that. Might have to correct me on that one. Um, but he basically released footage of um, someone in CNN uh, just basically exposing their bias. And then we get Amy Robach, I think is the ABC reporter. And she's the one that's come out with the ex- the Epstein um, coverage. Uh, she basically had this story three years ago. She mm. uh, really had the fact. She was ready to kind of expose this, blow it up. Um, and that was muted. Yeah. Um, and she also stated, which I think is interesting, that it was by ABC and also by the royal family, Buckingham yeah, Palace. Yeah, they went um, ham on them apparently. Yeah, yeah, which is we're now understanding why, because of Prince Andrew. But yeah, um, yeah so just on the whole mainstream media stuff. Which they've now your... denounced. There is um, potentially relinquishing his duties, his royal duties, yeah, isn't I've he? Heard. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah. But the Queen has taken that off him. Because yeah, the Queen is so pure. Bear in mind <laughs> that he appointed, was it the same PR guy? Yeah. Um, and Brief, I think, was that that was representing the Epstein side? Yeah. Or so, something along those lines, some close relation. That fact checks, I'm not even sure 100% on that one, but I'm pretty sure that I read um, that that is the actual case, which is just it's yeah, ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Um, but go on, carry on, as you're saying. Yeah, so what's your kind of take on this whole exposure of mainstream media? What... How do you think it's aiding mass enlightenment? I think is a is a good way to kind of Here's the thing, here's the way I see it. It's irreparable, but we have to be realistic that they maintain the density right now. Yeah. So they've got all the strings connected to them. So the only way that those strings are going to decouple and decouple in an aggressive way is when we build genuine solutions that do not feel any different than the ones that we are replacing. They should be better. Right. And we're not there yet. I wouldn't want to be one of those companies building next social media network. In fact, it's one of those businesses <laughs> that I just have no interest in of yeah. invest in one. Uh, but to run one, that's just a freaking headache. I no, no way in hell would I be interested in running a social media company. Um, but don't let that dissuade you. Please go off and do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we definitely need one. We, we definitely need a replacement of these platforms. However, I have some really interesting ideas as to how to be an arc and how to bridge uh, between where the density is and and where we need to be, um, but having a bridge in the interim to give people what they want, which is sovereignty over their user base, right? Because I actually heard Joe Rogan speaking about this uh, and he went super old school and started speaking about he's recreating his email list, Mm. right? He's recreating his email subscriber list, right? And that's because he is fearful of being deplatformed by YouTube. Like this guy, Joe Rogan, he's yeah. got the most successful, best podcast on the planet. And he is terrified that his hard work in order to get there, think how much work the guy's put in. He's got a crazy schedule, he's everywhere, right? And he's put in all that work and he feels insecure that his work and the fruits of his work, which is his subscriber base, is gonna be taken away from him and he'll be deplatformed. So he's trying to back it up by recreating the email list. 
right? So <clears throat> I think at least huge opportunity, uh, areas of opportunity uh, for like someone to like create a bridge. Uh, and we got some, I got some good ideas uh, around that, but I can see the solutions coming. But the fact that we are even being forced to have these entrepreneurial thought processes mm -hmm. is very indicative of the time that we're in right now. And when you know that there is a very close, cozy, married, in fact, it's not even like ongoing, it's a full blown, we're married relationship between mainstream big banks and now social media. Social media used to be perceived as a platform of the people, independence, right? Uh, where an independent artist can flourish, where you can connect to your user base on a peer to peer basis. You can build and exchange value with your user base directly. But now what we've realized is that big corporate interests, yet again, the big four banks, the same guys who own, what's it, uh, plus 90% of mainstream media, five corporations, was it Disney, Time Warner, CBS? Um, these companies are also the major, well, the banks actually behind these companies are also the same major investors in social media. Who are the banks? It's Fidelity. Um, Vanguard Group, BlackRock. BlackRock. Um, State Street. State Street. So you've got these four major uh, corporation, major banks, major shareholders in media, got mainstream media lockdown, but also the largest shareholders in Facebook and Google. Yeah. Right? I'm not sure on Amazon, I haven't checked Amazon, but Facebook yeah. and Google. Amazon, Amazon's there, another subject. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. maybe, maybe next episode. Yeah, <laughs> but, but we can go into so much detail about um, Facebook, Google, um, Amazon, they're all, it's, it's crazy, the information that you can kind of and find And funny out. enough, this actually ties into the bigger agenda um, yeah. And a bigger agenda is actually something that we're directly building a solution towards, mm -hmm. is that the currency of today is data. It's no longer oil, right? And that's a good thing now, only because of Bitcoin, which is what is gonna pee off these organizations because the reason why the system is being so corrupted and so manipulated and the data is like gold uh, of, of this new age is Every single one of these organizations is trying to build artificial intelligence. Whether they have an understanding of artificial intelligence or not is irrelevant, right? But I've heard high power CEOs talk about AI gods and worshiping AI gods. And, and this Insane. is ultimately what their mission is. <clears throat> so they're building their data sets, Facebook, Google, Amazon, all building their data sets. And data is kind of, it's, it's a benign thing. Right. The curation and articulation of data makes it intelligence, right? You then need to be able to articulate uh, that intelligence into something that is genuinely useful. And this is the push that all of these major companies do, in videos that even Bitmain's moved into this uh, field, right? So this is really and truly where the huge kind of entrapment is where the mark of the beast is because now you talk about implants and all the rest of it you combine that with data sets that you have no sovereignty over the streams that is the beast being built mm. okay and we are what feeds the beast we are the intelligence of the beast and it will therefore be used against us right your chip can be switched off the concept is actually great we are going on a technological whirlwind in terms of technological advancements on the planet. And that's good, it's positive. The issue is sovereignty over the sh data stream of that data. Because now every single human being on the planet is are their own little oil field. And when you have the right tools at your disposal to unlock your imagination and don't limit your imagination based on some corporate bank balance, now I just directly input it and I'm building, creating value, right? Because I am an oil field now, okay? having the tools at your disposal and an economic system with an equilibrium of being able to trade and transmit value across borders easily means people in Africa are individually, genuinely sovereign and their own individual little oil fields. Hmm. And they could trade their intellect globally around the world. That's where we're heading towards. What enables that to be free and empowering with no marking of the beast and actually making the beast our bitch is by taking all of these data sets and putting it on top of Bitcoin 
And now you have a pooling of data and you have an opt-in function where people are actually incentivized to aid and add intelligence uh, to the system. And these guys are ironically building the infrastructure that will enable the freeing of humanity, not in how they envision, because they, they built it for entrapment, right? And Bitcoin will unlock it for the complete opposite. It literally genuinely will take the beast and make the beast a bitch and become a public servant. And that's why I'm so gun ho on certain technologies and combinations of mm -hmm. certain technologies because I am not doom and gloom. I am not negative. Uh, I am not depressed in any way, shape or form about the state of reality on the planet right now. I think what's going on is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of light uh, being mm -hmm. activated. Um, and and just it's super, on, super positive. Just on that note as well, um, we've we've seen that recently, really, with the um, the the dark web bust. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You know, but they the that DOG awesome. Department of Justice, yeah. amazing. They they track down um, the administrators of the website by um, tracking transactions on the blockchain. So yeah. I just think that's a great point to end it on. Um, and also, I just kind of on that point a little bit more um, depth into what we're doing here at Bitstocks. How do you think that's going to kind of aid the whole the data ownership problem that we're having at the moment? Because that's that's a massive um, issue. So I know you kind of touched on it just now, but kind of reining it in more to, to bit stocks and, so and gravity. I'll jump in there. Yeah. So of course we we had that situation come out where um, of course a lot of the people had to answer for the crimes that they were doing on the dark web and everything that you was explaining there. This is a real world use case a real world situation of that actually happening so i've actually got the article here from when it actually first came out and the article itself is from bloomberg which i'm sure they'll bring up on the side of the screen but i'll just read out um quite a lot of the article to be honest with you because it was is all completely relevant um us and korea authorities broke up one of the world's largest markets for child pornography um something that of course, is a, a big talking topic at the moment because a lot of it is getting exposed on all different levels, predominantly what this talk was really about. Now, the US unsealed an indictment mm. against Jong Woo Sun, 23, who prosecutors say operated the dark net market that accepted Bitcoin and distributed more than 1 million sexual explicit videos involving children. Sun, a South Korean national, is serving 18 months in prison after being convicted. Personally. Is that it? Yeah, don't think that's anywhere near long enough. Um, but Goodness. the reason I, I'm, I'm just assuming here um, on why he got such a shorter sentence is because he, he helped them expose a lot more, maybe. So that, that's just my assumption. Let it be 18 situation. in Guantanamo, at least. Yep, 100%. Mm. Uh, and I'm pretty sure when he gets in there, it's not going to be the best of experiences. Now, since agents shuttered the site in March 2018, authorities have arrested 337 site users around the world. They were in countries including the UK, Germany, Brazil, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. And in nearly two dozen US states, according to the US authorities, the UK government said people in 38 countries were arrested. Authorities say they rescued at least 23 minor victims in the US and the UK and Spain who were being actively abused by users of, users of the site. Now, just to jump uh, a bit lower down on this actual article. Now, Sun's site called Welcome to Video contained more than 250,000 unique videos of those 45% contained new images that were previously unknown. So completely new images to the internet. Mm. Now, agents from the IRS Criminal Investigations Division, also involved, Don Fort, chief of the division, said they determined the location of the Darknet server in South Korea, identified Sun, and found the physical location of the website. They also unmasked users hiding behind Bitcoin transactions, Fort said. Our agency's ability to analyze 
analyzed the blockchain and de-anonymized Bitcoin transactions allowed for the identification of hundreds of presenters around the world. Fault said the scale of this crime is eye popping and sickening. So exactly what we've been talking about this whole time, what Bitcoin really is and what this segment is called shining light on everything. I don't think there's a better thing to end on than yeah. that. That is light bulb switch on yeah. shadows casted away. And this is why we want to have this setting to have these conversations, to speak truth, to switch on lights. And I want to say personally to the both of you, because there's going to be many other employees at Bitstock that are going to be joining us in this round table. So it's not always going to be us three. Um, but the reason why I wanted to start off uh, with these guys is because these guys have obviously known me my whole life. I've known you guys, uh, well, I've known you guys your whole life. Yeah. Um, and you know how crazy I've been uh, over the time. Um, and you know just how important what we're doing here really is. And uh, you understand the mission and you also understand every single dimension uh, of that mission and you understand the different levels of risk on some of the different levels uh, mm -hmm. of, of our mission. But at the same time, you share the same faith uh, in humanity as I do. And you also understand that it is a collective effort. Uh, mm -hmm. And what you guys are helping me and us do here at Bitstocks is to spark uh, that, that initiation, to spark that spin, to get hopefully people inspired to engage in discourse on these subject areas and just get people thinking. Um, so you guys personally, to both of you, I love you. I appreciate you. And let's do more of this. Let's, let's get more engagement. Let's get more discourse uh, going because I think what, six, eight, was it eight months you said? Yeah, about eight months ago. Okay. The last let's week. make a commitment. Uh, yeah. We've got to do at least one of these every single month, right? So we can assure this will be at least one of these going out every single month. Uh, and we'll try to increase it even much more uh, from there onwards. But this has been awesome. Yes, it's been great. So, peace, love and light, guys, as always. Great. It's good. Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs>